Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osur. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, transnational crimes are concern for the region. FNU to review accommodation policy. And funds approved for major refurbishment at Rarawai Mill. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. Just a few days after the departure of the Australian Prime Minister, their Federal Police Commissioner Andrew Colvin has graced our shores to see how Fiji or the region can better curb transnational crimes. On a fact-finding mission, Colvin is determined to work with the Fiji police force and put the country's security at the top. Anna Ravolo reports. Transnational crimes top discussions for both police commissioners amongst other subjects. Clearly we have a number of common challenges. Transnational crime is a challenge for everybody in this region. We know that uh, illicit narcotics is a challenge in this region, both in a transit sense, but also in a local use sense. Colvin says they feel Australia plays a huge responsibility in helping our region. So we know that uh, a large amount of the drugs that pass through this part of the world are destined for an Australian market, so we have a responsibility to do our bit to help our regional neighbours. Curbing these crimes remain a priority. Methamphetamine, uh, cocaine, of course, is also a challenge for us in the region. Uh, I have permanently dedicated officers here who work very closely at both the operational level but also the capacity building level. Uh, we share intelligence and that is the key. Harvin, who visited Tonga yesterday, will head for the Solomon Islands tomorrow. Anna Ravulo, FBC News. The Fiji National University is under pressure following a huge demand from students seeking accommodation at its hostels around the country. Vice-Chancellor Nigel Healy says the current policy only gives priority to first-year students who live outside the proximity of the college they study in. Akusita Tale reports the Vice-Chancellor thinks the policy is a bit blunt. The FNU's Halls of Residence policy was last reviewed two years ago and the Vice-Chancellor believes it's time to revise it to include students with disabilities. The current policy um, is uh, allocating spaces on, uh, on the basis of distance from campus only. Uh, and we think that when we're coming under pressure, we may need to have a slightly more finely tuned priority where students who are particularly disadvantaged um, have preferential access. FBC News sought clarification from the Vice Chancellor after concerns were raised by a partially visually impaired female student that she was being refused accommodation at the campus because of her disability. The female student who wished to remain anonymous claims that the university has advised that the hostel is not safe for her. Other priorities are given to international and regional students those sponsored by other agencies, while the third priority is given to private students. However, this list does not include people with disabilities. The obvious group that we are uh, uh, looking at at the moment is that the first-year students, freshers, uh, are more disadvantaged than second- or third-year students. The halls of residence are provided through ten campuses, including eight in the Central Division and two in the West. Akusita Tali, FBC News. Good news for cane farmers around Bar as they can expect improved performance from the Rarawai Mill in the new crushing season. This after the Fiji Sugar Corporation revealed during a consultation at Nukulo College in Bar yesterday that $9.3 million is being spent to refurbish the mill's boiler room. Details with Philippe and Icaso. Cutting down on mill breakdown is an area the FSE is closely focusing on before the new crushing season begins. Already an Indian consultant is working on the design. We will have the boiler refurbished and we will have to have the mill perform better next year. Once the mill performs better, then the problems of cane carrier, all these things will go away. Meanwhile, this was a great platform for these farmers to iron out issues with the key stakeholders in the sugar industry. When we see the grants given out, we have got so many of legard growers. 
When they hear government is giving grants, they come up. They want their share of the cake. As soon as they get the money, they plant the cane, they forget about it, looking after that cane. Responding to the issue raised, the FSC stated they will take this on board. The consultation, which continues tomorrow in Nandi, will also help stakeholders develop the national sugar policy. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. Fijians who have conjunctivitis or dhika are being urged to avoid going to public places, especially work and school, for a few days. The health ministry says conjunctivitis is usually a mild and self-limiting infection, but is contagious. Kelly Vadala reports. The advice comes as the health ministry recently recorded an increase in the infection from certain parts of the country. The way it spreads is that someone with conjunctivitis touches their eyes and then the, the uh, virus goes onto their hands and then they may touch someone else and that person will touch their face or their eyes and the, the virus or the bacteria will go into their eyes. Head of Health Protection Dr. Alicia Sahu Khan says many conjunctivitis cases resolve on its own within a few days, but if it worsens, medical attention is needed. It's important to be aware of the, of the symptoms of the severe form of the disease, which is uh, usually moderate or severe pain in the eye. You may get um, issues with um, photophobia or you're not wanting to look into bright lights. Uh, you could have a discharge of pus. Um, and of course increasing redness. So in those cases, when you have those um, symptoms, then you really should see a, um, um, a doctor. Visit your nearest health center and our doctors, they, they have the knowledge to differentiate between viral conjunctivitis, bacterial conjunctivitis, when they can become life-threatening, when they can be referred to ophthalmology services for expert management. The eye clinic at the CWM hospital recorded 15 cases of viral conjunctivitis cases last week out of the 263 patients seen. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. A call has been made for every religious organization in the country to break the silence on violence against women and children. The Vicar General for the Anglican Church, Father Risi Vuki, made this statement as they launched a Sasa faith program, which is aimed at reducing this growing issue. Ali Kimbia with the story. 25th. Speaking at the launch, Father Orisi Vuki has called on all faith-based organizations to make their voices heard. The church is complicit in the perpetuation of violence by not speaking out, by not standing, and not making us stand clearly about this issue. With the Sasa Faith Project aimed at reducing violence against women in communities, Vuki says, the Anglican Church stands on the issue is clear. There would be zero tolerance of violence within our homes, our schools, our communities, and in the church. For the members of the civil society organizations, the project is one that will bring positive changes in the communities. This program targets directly those norms and behaviors from which violence stems and is allowed to be perpetuated to educate their communities and advocate on issues relating to violence against women. This community-led approach is particularly exciting as people commit within their own villages. The project is funded by the European Union and the Australian government. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Still to come, move to review outdated National Building Code welcomed and Colombian drug trafficker appeal sentence details after the break. Bula, never go Malaka Leloma, go in the cash on the wrong Nambula Fib, Nambondo and a serre. Oya was it says a lambasa, and the teletain of Rome and Nambula Fem, Nambado and Serre. We have a Timeli, a Kona Town of Hinatoka, Teletakin and Avarong and Nambula Fem, Nambando and a serre. Never go find in a town of Singatoka, get on the Teletaka Nambula Fem, Nambando and a serre. Bula Fem, Nambado and a serre. The Construction Industry Council has welcomed the government's support to review the National Building Code. Chief Executive Vijay Naidu says the 29-year-old code needs changes as certain provisions does not meet the current standards of the building industry. Sainian Boiler reports. The National Building Code needs to be simplified so it is easily understood by the construction workers. 
the code itself is more of a technical document that requires a technical person to uh, read and explain. Uh, it's, it's not really readable by a layman. Uh, so then the other thing about the code is it's a manual document. Uh, nowadays with technology and everything, it, we should have soft documents like you know, PDF copies or in Word so we can edit it. Council project manager Stephen Hallisey says the code does not meet the standards for the construction of buildings and the materials used. And the code should address current environmental challenges, uh, whether that's exposure in the marine environment or cyclonic conditions. Uh, there's a great deal of concern about uh, the environment and uh, the code should uh, probably reflect that. The one-day workshop will allow the Construction Industry Council to provide the long-term coordination of the awareness, training and the sustainability of developing the National Building Code. The workshop includes representatives from the private sector and the government. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. The lack of structural engineers is a concern for the Construction Industry Council. Chief Executive Vijay Naidu says qualified structural engineers mostly go for greener pastures. Naidu says most local contractors are hiring engineers from overseas to undertake construction here. The council is working closely with the two major universities to address the issue. We just need to train more engineers to be uh, up, to, up, to, up to standard. Uh, this country needs it. Uh, Structural engineers are very, very valuable uh, people, and especially now that construction activity is reaching newer heights, I think uh, it's important that uh, we train more engineers, especially structural engineers, eh? uh, who can then advise in the building code and other aspects of construction better. Colombian national Aidan Alec Hurtado, who was convicted in 2017 for unlawfully importing cocaine, has appealed his sentence. His lawyer informed the court they needed to see whether Hurtado's confession was voluntary. He says the court also needs to take into consideration that Hurtado's English is poor and they should be allowed to argue the matter. Hurtado's lawyer mentioned there are no guidelines as far as hard drugs is concerned and Hurtado's sentence should be based on the purity of the drug. Hurtado was found guilty for the unlawful importation of 20.5 kg of cocaine and was sentenced to 13 years and 11 months imprisonment with the non-parole period of 11 years and 11 months. The purity of the cocaine was 89% and had a street value of more than $6 million. Turning to world news, the partial government shutdown in the United States is now officially the longest in its history. It's been a month since more than 800,000 federal employees have been paid. Some of them are still working. Coming up in sports later with Jamie, Fiji linked Samu Kerevi to Captain Queensland Reds in Super Rugby. But Rachel joins you now with business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break. Bollywood blockbuster creates cash splash in Fiji. And in growing Fiji, new press gallery for Parliament reporters. Stay with us. Viola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic hits, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Senirawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Dino. I'm from Outrigger, Coral Coast, Singer Toka. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Salote, I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Outrigger, Singer Toka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Leading business tonight, Bollywood blockbuster Simba has become the most watched movie in Fiji to date. The Ranbir Singh and Sara Ali Khan Stara is set to earn around half a million Fijian dollars in revenue from Fiji. Catherine Krishna reports. The patrons, because it is a sort of a masala, it's sort of an action, it attracts people. And uh, the actors are well known. And also probably the timing, it came at the right time in the month of December. The global thinking was the movies won't do well. A movie like Aquaman is fairly graphical. The movie has so far earned 234.37 crores from 26 days of screening. 
The large sum spent on this movie from Fiji shows how Bollywood movie lovers make no compromise when it comes to entertainment. Catherine Krishna, ABC News. And we now join Sharon from HFC Bank with the latest from the money world. The global mood was risk of today, boosting investment or interest in safe haven assets, including gold. A downward revision of 2019 economic growth by the International Monetary Fund weighed on sentiment, as did signs of rising tension between the US and China. On the data front, New Zealand released its fourth quarter inflation numbers. The CPI came in higher than forecast. Focus this week is now expected to shift to the World Economic Forum annual meeting in Davos. Numerous policy makers are gathering there to discuss geopolitical tension and the trade war. So let's see if the outcome excites the market in any way. And that's the latest from HFC Bank, Tanaka. Thanks, Sean. On to the exchange rates as it was set this morning. The Fiji dollar gain against the Chinese yuan as well as the Australian dollar, but was on the downside against the other currencies. Taking a look at the commodities market, oil prices declined to 52.74 a barrel. Gold rose to 1,283 per ounce and silver closed at 15.33 an ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, Parliament is expected to have a new press gallery with the chambers for the first time since the new complex opened five years ago. The acting secretary general to Parliament says the new press space, which will be above the public gallery, will enable journalists to get bird's eye view of the deliberations in the House. Maggie Boyle tells us more. Currently under construction, the establishment of a new media gallery was spearheaded by the late Speaker of the House, Dr. Chico Leveni. The, the space which they were designated was too crowded and not conducive to parliamentary reporting, so she thought that uh, it would be good to have a space in the chamber to have the media settled to be able to report fairly. Fully funded by the Chinese government, the gallery is expected to be equipped with the latest gadgets. It's glass and case, so the, the, um, the, the, the press or the media are able to see everything that is happening. And sometimes we get complaints about the media not being able to see who interjected. So I think this will be very good because they're able to see everything. Fijian Media Association's General Secretary Stanley Simpson says the re-establishment of a press gallery within the House is welcome. They'll be able to uh, li listen carefully and look at the proceedings uh, much better than they do at the moment, uh, hear things much clearer, and, uh, and be able to get a general sense of what's going on, uh, a proper sense of what's going on within Parliament, and be able to report Parliament uh, better and more accurately. The press gallery is expected to be ready before Parliament's next sitting on the 11th of February. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. And that's a wrap from the business desk for tonight. Jamie joins you now with the latest in sports. Thanks and good evening up ahead in sports. PG7 speedsters to play vital role this weekend. And Tambakau Zoro confident of retaining Pacific Games gold medals. Details after the break. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirch FM. Mirch FM is hot. I'm Charlene Robert, Mirchi FM, Rock in Lambasa. I'm Sonami, Nasori Jackson, Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt, I'm in Bubble Single Line, Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Kritika from Jack's Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. After stamping their mark on the World 7 Series in Dubai and Cape Town, Amniasi Tui Mamba, Willimoni Botitu and Melin Derenalangi can expect to have targets on their backs at the Hamilton 7s. Fiji Airways men's 7s coach Gareth Bieber praises their work ethic but expects them to be singled out by their opponents this weekend. Vasnil Prasad reports. 
The National Sevens team not only won the Cape Town Sevens after 13 years, but also gave birth to three players who shook the world in South Africa last month. Coach Gareth Beba says Aminiasi Tuimamba, Vilimon Mbotitu and Meli Derenelangi are special members of the team. They're not newbies anymore. They've actually got a bit of a reputation and players will know this and, and, and coaches will know this and will will look to pressurise them and look for, for the weaknesses in their game, the good thing about all three of those is that uh, you know they, they go about their work with humility. Beba says they are also closely working on the discipline issues. You know, we talk about you know mentally being in a position uh, of control uh, but also you know where you can exert uh, you know maximum pressure on your opponent uh, by physically winning a battle against them but that doesn't mean that you need to do it without the within without being in the laws. The team also had a scrimmaging session with Canada and the players responded well. It was, was good for us. Uh, you know, Canada are a structured side, uh, similar in respects to the likes of perhaps Wales or, or Australia. The national team sits third on the table with 35 points and hopes to move up after the Hamilton Sevens. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. The host side expects a large turnout of Fijian supporters at the FMG Stadium this weekend. Sprint King Banuve Tambakaudoro is confident of winning a spot in the 100 meters athletics event at the Pacific Games in July. The defending gold medalist for the event clocked a time of 10.50 seconds in his last run, which is just a hundredth of a second outside the qualifying mark. Meli Tavanga has more. It hasn't been an easy journey for Banuve Tambakaudoro, who gave up athletics in 2017. After a short sting in rugby sevens, the speedster is making a return to the tracks to defend his two gold medals at the Pacific Games. Uh, getting back into athletics, uh, everything's come back really quick and I didn't expect it to happen this fast, but uh, you know, I'm pretty happy with the way things have progressed so far. So uh, it, was, uh, it was a good opportunity for me to get away and just get my head right again. Tamako Doro looks in perfect shape for the upcoming games. He has secured a place in the 200 meters, but he's yet to qualify for the 100 meters. I'm really fast, uh, those are always my goals. And uh, if the gold medal is within my reach, I'm going to take it. But I'm very confident that I'll bring it back home this year. If Fiji general manager Calvin Yee says Tabakaudara's return is a major boost to them. A few that have uh, already attained the, the big qualifiers, um, including uh, Banuve Tabakaudara, who's on his way back uh, trying to make the qualifying. Tambao Bullet won two gold and two silver in the last Pacific Games in Papua New Guinea in 2015. Meli Tabanga, FBC Sports. The Fiji National Rugby League hopes to field more local players in the Fiji Mbati team for the 2021 Rugby League World Cup. Fiji Mbati assistant coach Joe Rambele says this is in line with their development plans. Rambele says they are hoping to take 10 local players to England's 2021 World Cup. If you can see for the past years only the overseas best players, majority of them take the flying field now. Half of the team from Denver, so it's exactly the same process that we have tried to do. Fiji-born Samu Kerevi has been named captain of the Queensland Reds for the 2019 Super Rugby season. The star centre replaces Scott Higginbotham as skipper. Meli Tavanga tells us more. Timothy Vakuruivalu, the son of weightlifting Fiji's vice president, Della Shaw, will be part of the Fiji team for the Junior World Championship that will be hosted in Suva in June. Vakuri Walu says he understands the huge responsibility and the pressure he'll be under going into the tournament. He says participating in the competition with lifters from around the world will also help him gauge his current form. The World uh, Juniors is a really big competition. Uh, more than uh, all the countries around the world will be coming into Fiji for the World Juniors. Uh, preparation has also been uh, going really well. The uh, same uh, effort has been putting into the Pacific Games. Uh, the same uh, effort has also been put into the World Juniors. Because uh, Fiji will be hosting, it's uh, going to be really big to have the home nation. So I'll we'll be training really hard uh, to try and make my country proud. Second seed, Rafael Nadal eased past unseeded American Francis Tiafo to reach the Australian Open semi-finals. Nadal winning 6-3, 6-4, 6-2. And the former champion will come up against crowd favorite Stefano Tsitsipas after the green, uh, Greek beat Spaniard Roberto Bautista Agut. The 20-year-old survived a four-set battle to become the youngest male Grand Slam semifinalist since 2007. 
Football superstar Cristiano Ronaldo has accepted a $31 million fine for tax evasion. In today's play of the day, Indian cricket bowler Mohamed Shami was in fine form as he took two early wickets against New Zealand, bowling Black Caps Martin Guptill and Colin Munro out. That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather and in new media. Check out Samsung's new prototype robots. That's right after the break. My name is Nan, I'm from Lumbua. As Freni North is famous, I'm from Radio Fiji 2. 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 मैं रेडियो फिजी टू पसंद करती हूँ सुनने के लिए रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धरकन मैं हूँ अंकल किंग सिंगर टू कट टाउन के टैक्सी ड्राइवर देश के रग्बी फेम में से वहीं से रेडियो फिजी टू फेम में से रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धरकन In new media, Samsung brought a variety of prototype robots to CES 2019, including the CareBot, which can help people in need of day-to-day -day assistance with everyday tasks. So weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Hope you're doing great this evening after receiving unlimited sunshine. Well, you had fun under the beautiful sun, that is all that matters. The sunny weather was amazing. Taking a look in the west, so pretty and gorgeous conditions. Great day for a dip at the Sawaini beach in Lotoka. Eastwards from Pekhabaru Suva, it was slightly cooler but sunnier throughout the day. And up north, sunny spells were quite comfortable, perfect for your holiday. At sea, southeast winds gusting 10 to 15 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, high tide at 8.17 p.m. with low tide at 2.45 a.m. Sunrise at 5.48. For tomorrow, sunshine and more sunshine. How exciting! Tomorrow's temps mostly ranging in the low 30 degree range. And looking further on to Friday, keep your umbrellas handy as light showers will roll in. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fijian Pulse tonight, we asked, should life imprisonment be mandatory for all rape cases? I think so, yes. So the, the victim see that the perpetrator is, gets what he deserves. I think it should be increased. We are a little bit lenient on, the, on this man, and maybe to increase it, it might uh, improve the uh, uh, what is happening in this especially raping uh, children and even uh, small girls are now even raped uh, exactly they should uh, get uh, life in prison so what they do is not very good i think the perpetrators deserve a life sentence in prison because their acts cannot be condoned a victim of rape will never be able to forget the act forced upon her or him so it's deserving of life sentences I think rape perpetrators deserve life sentences because rape cannot be tolerated. Recapping the main stories for tonight, transnational crimes are concerned for the region, FNU to review accommodation policy and funds approved for major refurbishment at Rarawai Mill. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM. To our poll question segment this week, we're asking, should Prime Ministers of Australia and New Zealand visit Fiji more often? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day, sent in by Shelvin Prasad, a beautiful view of Rakiraki Town. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your PC News for tonight. From the team and I, good night.
Nambula, Nevan go Malaka Leloma, Gonga in Nakas, or the Wagarong Nambula Fib, Nambando and a Serre. Oya was it size, a Lambasa, and the Teletan of Rome and Nambula Fem, Nambado and Serre. We have the Tumeli, Aquana Tano Hinatoka, Teletakin and Avaro and Nambula Fem, Nambando and a Serre. Never go fun in a town and go sing a talk. I get on the Talitakanambula FM, number two and a serre. Bula FM, number two and a serre.